After the Chicago Bulls' fourth straight win with Zach Levine out of the lineup, there was a bit of an issue with Alex Caruso going down with an injury late, which could be timely and costly for the Bulls as they look to go towards trade talks and more rumors just around the corner. I'm your host, Joey Mercer. This is Bulls Digest, and before we get into it there today, we're just going to say that about 95% of you that watch these videos are not subscribed, and if you aren't already subscribed and you enjoy these videos and click in them every single day, or this is your first time seeing them and you enjoy Chicago Bulls content, make sure to go down below, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications, because this is the place for you as we upload daily here on Bulls Digest. I was very sick and missed yesterday's video, so just for you guys, you're going to get two videos coming towards you there today because we're going to make up for that day we missed yesterday, and I said seven days a week, so if anything comes up like that, you're still going to get your seven videos a week minimum. So without further ado, let's get into it with the first topic of today, as Caruso is out again. He has been dealing with some injuries as of late and over the past few seasons, and it is no shocker to see him down with another injury, unfortunately. When you get Caruso playing lots of time, he tends to get injured. He plays such a physical style of basketball, diving at people's feet and getting the loose balls that he is everywhere on the court at all points of time. So it is going to happen where he plays so physical that he is going to get some injuries from here and there. He hasn't really dealt with anything too, too serious over the past little bit of this season. So hopefully he can, you know, stay on that pace. And we don't have full updates towards how long it's going to be until he's out. Uh, but we are going to keep you up to date and we will tell you as far as we know here as Bulls Digest in this episode. So in the first article I saw in Sports Illustrated said that the Chicago Bulls are praying for the best in Alex Caruso's condition as they celebrate their sizzling four-game victory streak after defeating the San Antonio Spurs. Caruso went down once again with the new injury on Friday night as he defended the driving Devin Vassell. Alex accidentally stepped on Kobe White's foot and rolled over the floor while mincing in pain. Caruso was escorted out of the court following the play with over 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter. A few minutes later, he was ruled out for the remainder of the game due to a left ankle injury finishing with four points, three rebounds, and two assists. So this came on a night that Caruso was the only person in the starting lineup struggling, and Torrey Craig had some great production off the bench. All the other starters, the other four, finished with 20-plus points in this game, and I gotta say it was one of the best games that I've seen the Bulls play when it comes to the second half, as DeRozan struggled a lot early, and I believe he was around one for nine in the first half of that game. So, he really picked things up in the fourth quarter, putting up nine points there, and that was good to see him turning things around uh, for sure, and the starters were great last night, and Torrey Craig tying a career high with five three-pointers. Next thing I saw on this was a uh, just a fan tweeting out at, uh, at underscore Marcus D3 underscore, saying Alex Crusoe had to be helped off the court after getting tangled up with Kobe White. Please be okay. If you want to go ahead and uh, watch that clip there, of him being, uh, you know, getting injured. It was a bit of an awkward fall. It's hard to say what it looks like. It looks like it could have been the ankle. Could have been a hyperextension of the knee. But uh, obviously, hopefully, he is okay. Not just for the Bulls, but for himself as a player. You don't like to see injuries happen at all in this league. Or any league, for that matter. The next thing that we saw on it was Billy Donovan coming out and talking on it. Thing. I don't know how severe his ankle is, he said. I just don't know the severity right now. When I got in there, he just said it was his ankle and he was just icing, but I'll probably find out more if they examine here. And that's why I said it could be a hyperextension of the knee, as all they do know is the ankle. And pain can be referred pain as well. He could be dealing with pain in his knee now due to his ankle, and that could be something as well that uh, with the ankle going down, the knee will feel better too. But it is really hard to pinpoint pain at times too. He could have, you know, had something to do with the Achilles. Feels like it's the ankle. It's really hard to say if it's... It's not just a tear or a break. It can be such referred pain from sprains, uh, fractures, things like that. Uh, the next thing that I saw on this was the injury update from the official Chicago Bulls Twitter account saying Alex Caruso left ankle will not return to tonight's game. So that's what we're going to say it is right now. The left ankle, like I said, more updates to come on this as this is a developing story. And who knows, we might even hear more by tomorrow. And uh, maybe that's what we will hear for tomorrow's video on Sunday about a Caruso injury update. But as of right now, this is what we know on that. 
Now, what do we know exactly? Which leads us into our second topic of the day. What do we know? What does this have to do with Caruso? Is this an ongoing thing? What history do we have with this? And we're going to get into all that right now. So, it says that AC has been enduring a left toe strain throughout the season, wherein he already missed two games. Last week, he re-injured it against the New Orleans Pelicans. So, interesting enough to see there that, yeah, he did injure it against the Pelicans again, something he's been dealing with, and something that's caused him to not look 100% with his bounce, although his shooting has been absolutely phenomenal so far the year. This is the best that I've seen Caruso shoot the three ball in his entire career, not just with the Chicago Bulls. Next thing we saw in it was, with Zach Levine unavailable for the next three to four weeks, any injury within Chicago's remaining backcourt unit will be significant. In this recent case of Caruso, the team can only be prepared as his defense and hustle will be sorely missed in the upcoming competitive games. Yes, it would from Caruso. Caruso's been a major part of this team, and the guy that players say has the most, and GMs of course, has the most trade value with his contract being so good. Levine and his defense has not been missed, but his offensive game certainly has. We've been on a four-game win streak. I'm not sure if I want to say that's a coincidence or because Zach uh, hasn't been causing the Bulls to win so far this season. But either way, it looks like the backcourt has been playing very well with Zach out. And hopefully they continue with Alex out as well, as I believe that Tsumu will get a lot more minutes and Javon Carter will be the backup guard there for sure. Which brings us to the last point of this topic, being both the Sumu and Carter are due for increased minutes should Caruso get sidelined because of his ankle. But the veteran just showed ample signs of optimism after the game despite, full, despite sorry, the painful injury. Alex Caruso had the right ankle taped up in the post-game locker room, called it a two steps forward, three steps back moment, but his hope was it wasn't that serious. He'll know more tomorrow when it sits for a night. He was joking with Vooch, so it's always good. Hard to say. I mean, he could still be in pain even though he is joking with Vooch about it. He might not want to see or even let his teammates know that he's in pain as he is such an important part of their team, especially on the defensive end being basically the defensive anchor of this team as he is still one of the best defensive players in this league, in my personal opinion, and events that say it as well. So that leads us to the next topic today of updated trade availability sorry on Alex Caruso where does he stand right now for his trade availability are the Bulls going to move him are they going to hold on to him and his trade value as we know is very high and some people even say it's higher than Zach Levine because the contract is much nicer to take on as an NBA team and what he can do on the defensive end is very easy to plug and play in any team whereas if you're looking at Levine you're getting so much scoring at around 25 a game but you're basically giving up a lot of defense in that matter as well. What I read in an article from Bleacher Report was if the Chicago Bulls go into sell mode Alex Caruso might be one of the key players talked about as a trade candidate who doesn't get moved. Per Casey Johnson of NBC Sports Chicago the Bulls have been hesitant to discuss deals involving Caruso at this point because he is arguably the, this regime's greatest success story and he is the perfect embodiment of the culture the franchise wants to project. Being, you know, hustle, grind, defense, that sort of thing, that real defensive motor. The key thing that Johnson points out is that anything can change over the next two months before the trade deadline on February 8th. Crusoe could be one of the most sought-after players in the, if the Bulls decide to put him on the trade block. He's an excellent role player who fights hard on both ends of the court and has had playoff success during the Los Angeles Lakers' run to the 2019-20 NBA title. So yes, he is obviously a winning basketball play, player there, as he played a major part on that bubble team that won a championship. So that isn't to be argued there. He has had some sample there that he is a great player in the playoffs. And he seems to be a player that can lead a defense at this point in his career, which is great to see that he can transform his game from being a solid role player into a real starter that is a defensive star at this point. And that's another reason why he has such high trade value. They said that the Athletics, Jovan Bahu, reported last month with the Lakers would have interest in Caruso, DeRozan, and Zach Levine. Johnson noted there are scenarios in which teams could seek to have Caruso added to a deal for Levine if they are going to take on the money still owed to Levine. Caruso's contract also makes him increasingly valuable 
in trades. He's making 9.5 million this season with a partial guarantee of 3 million for 2024-25, which becomes fully guaranteed at 9.89 million on June 30th. The 29-year-old Caruso is averaging a career high 9.8 points per game on 54% shooting, 48 from 3 in 19 appearances this season. Chicago has been playing better recently with three consecutive wins after a five-game losing streak. That is now four consecutive wins. And the team is still eight, now 9-14 and 14 overall and two games behind the Hawks for number 10 seed in the Eastern Conference. So, things are looking up for Chicago besides this injury. However, there is optimism that Caruso will be back and it won't be something that's going to cause him a lot of time to be out. However, what is the status on Zach Levine right now? and the trade, and will he be back before he is traded, or if he's traded, that right now is an unknown, and we will be talking about that more as stories develop on Zach Levine and the Chicago Bulls uh, around trading him. This has been your host, Joey Mercer. This has been Bulls Digest. Make sure to go down below, like, and comment on the video. I'd love to hear from you guys all the time. And uh, make sure to subscribe, turn on the bell for notifications, and you won't have to search for this content anymore. I can't wait to see you in the next time. So, sign up.